Okay, so we've got all of the upper structures from season one uh, broken down here on these three bags. Uh, so basically each one of these pieces of paper represents an episode from season one. And the three types of chords we use in season one to apply upper structures to. So our minor sevens and our minor seven flat fives here, uh, upper structures that go well with dominant seven chords here, and then other upper structures that pair well with major seven chords here. And the upper structures are on the cards. What we're gonna do is basically throw these, uh, these upper structures into the corresponding bags and pull them out at random uh, later to show you how we can apply these upper structures to these three chords. Uh, so here on the minor seven flat five bag, I've got five uh, separate options that we can pick and choose from, uh, all corresponding with five episodes from season one. So we're gonna throw those in the bag there, uh, mix them up, and I've got my 11 upper structures that correspond with dominant seven chords here. I'm gonna throw those in there, and then the four uh, upper structures that go with the major seven chord there. So let's break this down a little bit here on our board, right? So we had our two, our two minor chord also from time to, from time, to time might be a minor seven, flat five. Uh, then we've got, I'm gonna use a brighter color for more tension on the dominant region. We've got our five sevens here and this will all resolve eventually on a nice cool one major seven. Uh, so the reason I just, I didn't really at random pick a two, five, one, right? If I'm, if I'm looking at these lower structures that we're pairing the upper structures with, it kind of automatically spells out a two, five, one progression, a minor seven, a dominant seven, and a major seven. So for, for the purposes of this exercise, we're gonna apply it to a two, five, one, but as you'll see later, we don't have to. These are gonna work really well with a ton of different chords. And if I consider, do some math real quick. If I consider uh, the five upper structures that will be in that bag and the 11 upper structures that will be in the dominant seven bag and the four that we said that are in the major seven bag and we do the maths, we get 220 options with just three chords and the upper structures that we can pair with them. So. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's go over to the piano and pick at random from the bag while blindfolded uh, some of these chords and then play them and see what they sound like. All right, so let's pick at random any upper structure that pairs well with a minor seven chord or minor seven flat five. Um, a quick note about that. So yeah, we can use the minor seven flat five, don't forget, because we can always borrow uh, from minor. And since we're targeting a major seven chord or a major chord in this case, that's effectively what we would be doing if I were to play an upper structure on top of a minor seven flat five. We would just be borrowing from minor for a split second. But that's why you see both of those uh, chord symbols as lower structures on this back as an option. So let's go ahead and randomly pick an upper structure for the minor seven. Uh, let's see here we get from episode nine, five minor over minor seven. So let's think about that here. Uh, so five minor over, a, in this case, because of our progression, a two minor seven chord. All right, let's keep going here. Let's get all of them out of the bag first, and then we'll write out the actual uh, progression on the board. So what's gonna go on top of our dominant seven chord? Uh, our five chord in this case, we have a, all right, a major six chord over the dominant seven chord. So that would be uh, major six over dominant seven. One more, so we're, here's our major seven chord. This is our target. Uh, let's see, what do we get here? From episode five, a major five chord on top of our major seven chord, which is in this case is R1. All right, so if we, if we were to do this uh, in C, what we would get here, uh, what's the two of C? Let's write out the actual progression first. So we'd be going D minor, uh, G7, uh, C major seven. So there's our two, five, one, and C. Let's do the upper structures now of those based on our random choices. All right, so the five of D is A. That means I'm doing an A minor over D minor. Cool voicing. Uh, the six of G is E, and it's a major chord, so I'm 
Remember, I'm playing E major over G7, and the five of C is G. So here we go. A minor over D minor, E over G7, and G over C. Let's check out what this actually sounds like. So before we actually play the progression in its entirety, let's take a second and listen and look at what these upper structures, these triads we found at random from our bags would sound like in a vacuum by themselves. Very, very weird, almost disparate, like they have nothing to do with one another because, I mean, they really don't, not in, not in that context anyways. So we're gonna see now uh, what this progression sounds like with the connective tissue that is these original 2-5-1 chords, that, uh, those, those lower structures. Remember, we're, we're using a 2-5-1 right now, but it, you can do these on top of uh, a lot of other progressions and a lot of other chords besides just a 2-5-1. A so uh, D minor uh, with the A minor on top. So we have this and then makes much more sense, right? And it sounds really cool. And now you can see how those uh, seemingly disparate sounds are all tied together and what it does to the voicings and the color it can add and the separate sort of context it creates. <laughs> so while yes, like on their own, they sound out of context and weird, but when you hear them uh, with the two five one chords, with the D minor and the G seven and the C, you can see the extra texture and color these upper structures provide us, and how it's a really sort of easy way to kind of make the chord sound more uh, jazzy, if you will. Right. So let's listen to it again. So A minor, E, G. I'm using inversions now to make the voice leading a little smoother too. Right. So I'm going a root position A minor, first inversion E, and then a root position G on my right hand. And something else we'll talk about later, how to voice these chords to create the desired effect of either whether you want to use smooth voice leading or, or something else. So here, here's the chords again, right? Really cool, great, great texture, great color, and there's that jazzy sound we were talking about. So to illustrate how flexible this idea of using upper structure triads on top of chords is, I got a real book out here, we got Misty, and we're gonna just look at the first four bars and, and take everything we just at random grab from those grab bags and apply it to all of the chords in the first four bars of Misty because all we have in the first four bars of Misty, uh, Misty is major seven chords, minor seven chords, and, and dominant seven chords. So not only can we apply the idea of upper structures to this, we can use exactly what we grabbed at random and wrote on the whiteboard earlier to all of these chords uh, in the first four bars of Misty. So taking the three types of chords we're playing our upper structures on top of that we uh, talked about earlier in the video, the major seven, the minor seven, and the dominant seven, we see our first chord of Misty is a major seven chord. So that's gonna correlate really nicely uh, with the major five chord on top of that. So we have E flat major seven, uh, five major on top of that, that's gonna give us B flat. So B flat on top of E flat major seven. All right, so now on the downbeat of measure two, we have a minor seven chord. Uh, that's when we're using our five minor. So in this case, we have F minor over B flat minor seven. So on the third beat of the same measure, we see our first instance of a dominant seven chord, uh, E flat seven. This is when we use the six major. Uh, remember earlier from our, our random grab bag experiment. So we have a six major, uh, that's gonna give us C. So C over E flat seven on the downbeat uh, measure three, we go back to the major seven chord. We have an A flat major seven. So that's a five major over A flat major seven. E flat over A flat major seven. And then we move to an A flat minor seven. There's our five minor upper structure. So we get E flat minor over A flat minor seven. Remember the five of A flat is E flat. That's what we're basing all of these upper structures on. All right, so five minor, the fifth of A flat, E flat. Uh, then we're going to go to, in the same measure, a dominant seven chord, D flat seven. So there we use the six major. So the six of D flat is B flat. I got my B flat major chord on top and my D flat seven on the bottom. And we're going to go into the next measure and resolve this uh, harmony with an E flat major seven. So there's my major seven chord again. We're gonna go five major, the five of E flat, 
is B flat. So I got a B flat major triad on top of E flat major seven. And if we put all of that together, let's see what it sounds like. And as you can see, it works perfectly. And with little to no effort, once you understand which upper structures pair with which chords. Always substitute an altered chord, uh, a flat nine, with another altered chord, a sharp nine. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Thanks again for watching. If you really like this video and you wanna learn more about this topic and all sorts of other stuff, check out our channel on YouTube. And a huge thank you for those of you who support us by getting any of our books and apps. That support helps us to create more content, animations, and things like that. Remember, you can always visit our website, mdex.com, to learn more about all of the music books and apps that are available. For more information, there are links in the video description. Thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with the current content. And we'll catch you next time. Seven over E minor seven flat five, which also sounds as a C7 add nine chord which could be used as a substitute for the A7 under the tritone system. The whole point is that you look at upper structures from different perspectives. Each perspective will open up different doors. Any of these ways of thinking is useful.